Hello friends, uh, we're welcome back. We will continue some of the lectures that we've dealt with with metacognition, which is thinking about thinking. In this video, we're going to examine the idea of self-concept from the perspective of seeking self-improvement and personal growth. This is the first in several in a series, so bear with me. I remind you that self-concept is how we think about and evaluate ourselves. How do we define self-concept? Just gave it to you. It's a general term referring to how individuals think about or perceive themselves. Self-concept plays a huge role in self-improvement. How you think about yourself, how you perceive yourself, how you identify yourself plays a very big role in the idea of improving yourself. Self-concept also generates a self-fulfilling prophecy regarding personal success or failure. By a self-fulfilling prophecy, I mean that you predict something, and therefore by the nature of the prediction, you bring that to pass. I remember many years ago, I had a little gentleman in school I was, uh, I was teaching, uh, I think he was a ninth grader, and he came up and said, oh, Mr. Waller, I, I'm going to fail. I'm going to fail. I'm not smart enough to pass this class. I just can't do work when you give it to me. So, of course, I gave him his work. He didn't do it because he knew he couldn't do it. He didn't do it. And then by not doing it, the grade that he got from that reinforced that he couldn't do it. Of course, I'm a little devious. And one day he gave me a paper and he about one third of the way did it and I gave him a 90 on it. And he, he just couldn't believe it. I said, yes, you made a 90 on it. I said, you can do a lot more than you think you can. The next paper he did, he worked a little harder and he got a 91. And lo and behold, before you knew it, he was out there doing what he needed to do because he had a better opinion about it, of himself. He decided that he could do it, therefore he did it. Self-concept can generate a self-fulfilling prophecy regarding personal success or failure. Thinking about our own attributes, abilities, identities, relationships, and goals plays a huge hand in guiding what we are able to do and what we will become. Is self-concept always accurate? Now, here in this picture, we have a young lady standing in front of a mirror. Let's look into the mirror to see what she sees. Now, does she see this or does she see this? Well, if she sees this, she has a good self-concept. She sees herself as she is. If she sees this, she has a poor self-concept. Oh, I like this picture because when I go to the mirror, this is more what I see, but uh, my part over on this side more closely matches the part over on that side. I, I was very amused the other day. A young lady at church told me, said, I'm getting so fat. And she was, she's a lovely young lady. And I'm thinking about, young lady, you don't know what fat is. But that was her concept of herself. Self-concept can be accurate or it can be inaccurate. Self-concept, of course, describes how we see ourselves. And self-concept may speak to our perceptions of our characteristics. Do we have hair? What color is our hair? What color are our eyes? Our traits, uh, the traits that we have about us. You know, uh, I, I laugh sometimes. My wife is very graceful. And, and listen, I can't walk and chew gum at the same time. I trip over cracks and sidewalks. Our identities. Uh, an identity is something like I may be a father, I may be a teacher, you may be a father, you may be a wife, you may be a daughter, you may be a student. Those are our identities and roles. And our self-concept is often described by ourselves in terms not just of our characteristics and traits, but of our identities and our roles. Self-concept may, may be determined by us and uh, described by us in terms of our relationships of the goals that we have set for ourselves. Self-concept is a very powerful predictor of our ability to grow into what we want to become. Self-concept may be weak or strong. 
A weak self-concept is founded on less confidence in our assessment of ourselves, and weak self-concept is more easily molded. Strong self-concept is founded on high confidence in our assessment of ourselves, and strong self-confidence is less easily molded. Now, strength is not always a good attribute, and care must be taken to ensure that the confidence is well-founded. If the confidence we have in our self-confidence concept is well-founded, then strength is a good thing. But if the confidence we have in our, our self-concept is poorly founded, then strength can be a bad thing. Remember that weak self-concept is more easily molded. Strong self-concept is less easily molded. The development of concept has two aspects. The first of these is the existential self. Now, existential self is this is the most basic part of self-concept and relates to the sense of being separate from others with the awareness of constancy of self. As children grow, an infant is born, then they look up one day and they figure out that they are separate from the people that are around them. That's the existential self. Uh, my little 10-month-old ten granddaughter has a very good sense of her existential self. She knows that she is she, and she knows that she has things she wants to do. So she sees herself differently or as being separate from all of those around her. The categorical self relates to the realization that self is part of a larger world with properties and experiences. We tend, as we grow older, to go through categorizations of ourself. Where do we fit in this larger world in regard to our properties and our experiences? Self-concept does not have to reflect reality. Uh, an individual's self-concept can be affected by many factors. Parental influences play a role. The, the influence of friends, world events, media, and a host of other factors all play a hand in how we perceive ourselves. All of these are very important. You say, well, how do world events uh, mold us in, in our self-perception? Well, you know, I'm old enough to remember the generation that lived through the Great Depression. And I remember when uh, my grandfather was, uh, was talking about, you know, he couldn't find any work. He couldn't care for his family. He couldn't do those things. And, and really, you know, a lot of people left off buildings because the world events took them to that place. And certainly media plays a big role with, with young people today in teaching them about their self-concept. If their teeth are not bright, they don't wear the right tennis shoes, they don't have the two and a half million dollar jeans on, then they don't matter as a person. Self-concept is often classified into four major categories. Uh, physical descriptions, and that's describing external appearance like hair color, eye color, and all that. Social roles, and that's where we see ourselves in society. Uh, male, female, uh, teacher, student, uh, educated, uneducated, uh, hunter, or, or uh, member of PETA, I guess we could say. Our, our role, our worker, our employee, or our supervisor roles. Personal traits are things that, such as explaining our emotions. Uh, I'm an energetic person. I'm a critical person. I'm a happy person. I'm an angry person. Those might be our personal traits. The last one is a little bit uh, more difficult to understand, and that's the existential factors. Where do I fit as a human being, or, or how do I fit in the universe? Uh, I, I, I'm a child of the stars. I have an aunt that feels that she is that. Now, what is interesting in this is that younger people tend to describe themselves in terms of physical descriptions and their personal traits. Older people tend to describe themselves in terms of their social roles and their existential factors. You find an older person like me, I'm delighted to show you a picture of my grandchildren because I'm grandfather. Uh, you find older people, I'm an employee, I'm a, I'm a this, that, or the other, and I'm a child of the universe. That's very important. 
I was doing making this up the other night when I went to church and I got real tickled. There was a passage of scripture that a person read out of the Bible that said, your old men shall dream dreams and your young men shall see visions. I hate to tell you guys that I've already crossed the divide. I'm into social roles and existential factors. I hope you're still young enough to be in physical descriptions and personal traits. As always, I want to thank you very much for your patronage. May the odds be ever in your favor. Uh, live long and prosper. And if you meet a Vulcan and, you say, and he says to you, live long and prosper, the proper response is peace and long life. You have a great day.